Now, is it just me or are Apple Keynotes getting a little repetitive? Now, what are the three constants when it comes to an iPhone Keynote? It's calling the newest device the fastest ever, talking about the trillions of things that are on the chip, and presentations of how awesome the camera is, even though we have no idea what it really looks like. But here's the 13 second rundown with what's new with the iPhone 11. It's, well, we're back to normal numerals. Instead of going with Roman numerals, there's a new chip in it that nobody really is going to care about. There's three cameras instead of two or one or two instead of one. You get the colors purple and green. Slow fees is maybe going to be a thing now. And we finally, finally get a fast charger with the new iPhones, which, you know, is probably the best part. The most interesting parts for me personally was the app that they used in the camera portion of the iPhone 11 Pro section as well as the Apple Arcade. And did you guys notice? Phil spilt water on his shirt. Now if you need boring blow-by blows of the keynote, just, I don't know, go to CNET's coverage. But here's 50 things that I've noticed that they probably didn't. Number one, that there's an Iron Man platform, which is pretty cool. Everybody loves Frogger. Frogger sucked when I was a kid. Frogger will still suck now as an ad. Number three is that the Apple Arcade is only five US dollars a month, which is pretty cool. Also, people don't really care much about free trials anymore. And we're launching with a one month free trial. Jason Momoa's beard looks really gross up close. By the looks of it, Apple TV Plus looks like it might be a bomb. Why do I say this? Because they're giving you one year free with every single new device that you buy. When else does that happen? You get a free year of something when you buy anything from Apple. And to tell you about the newest iPad, I'd like to invite Jaws to the stage. Seriously? Jaws is his name? That's almost as good as me naming my daughter Ima. Of course, the iPad is a magical piece of glass. It can become almost anything we want it to be. Mmm, magical. And we're especially excited that this iPad was engineered to take full advantage of iPad OS. Seriously, you designed an iPad to be used with, with iPad OS? What? And with a simple simple pinch on the soft keyboard, a new floating keyboard appears. The tiny keyboard is actually pretty cool. And actually this is one of the features that I saw and thought like, why didn't we do this before? Now, do you ever wonder what happens to all your old aluminum iPhones that you recycle or give away? They die and get res resurrected as cheap iPads as well as Apple Watches. Dear Mr. Cook. Dear Apple. Dear Tim. Hey, good morning. Good morning. And then suddenly I woke up to EMTs. When I fell, it automatically called 911 and then it calls my wife. When I think about what happened and what could have happened, thank you. Thank you. Now, I'll be honest with you, that Apple Watch video was pretty cool, mostly because it really feeds on the fact that there is this intersection of technology and humanities that Apple's really proud to exist in. Overall, with the keynote, I'm actually quite disappointed that not more emphasis was placed on the Apple Watch because it's just, this thing is just such a great product. Like in terms of growth and innovation potential, the Apple Watch has the most room to do both from my perspective. So having it only like, take up like, you know, 15% of the keynote, a little disappointing. And to tell you all about what's next with the Apple Watch, I'd like to invite up Stan E. Stan, we want to make Apple Watch even better for all the things you do and places you go. And so today, I'm so excited to share with you an Asian male Apple employee got to talk at the keynote. Yes, we can. Is that racist? <laughs> That Apple Watch commercial kind of looked like a throwback to the old iPad commercials, did it not? <laughs> Throughout the entire keynote, did anybody else notice how quickly everybody had to come off the stage? Like they were literally running off. Now, what was surprising to me was how very little Team Apple talked about the internals of the Apple Watch. Usually with these hardware announcements, they talk about the billions and millions and millions of something transistors or capacitors or, you know, space fucks capacitors. There's more time spent talking about how to accessorize your Apple Watch than it did the technical part. So it's, from my perspective, Apple recognizing the fact that nobody really cares about the internals and they just want to make it look pretty. And there are new Hermes models and these beautiful color block bands with a classic Hermes print. I also learned in this keynote that Hermes is apparently pronounced Hermes. Hermes. 
Oh, these are just stunning. Now the iPhone XR, according to Tim, is the most popular iPhone in the world. The iPhone XR became the most popular iPhone and the most popular smartphone in the world. Which makes a lot of sense because basically that's the only iPhone other than the first one that Apple has subsidized over the last 10 months because they couldn't sell enough of them at the beginning. We also launched the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max, the most advanced iPhones we have ever created. Really, Tim? Your newest iPhone a year ago was the most advanced iPhone that you had ever released? And now we have spatial audio, which provides an immersive theater-like experience. Spatial audio seems cool, but honestly, who plays games or watches movies without headphones anymore? Like, it's still just... Every single year they keep upgrading the speakers on these devices and every single year I keep thinking, when was the last time I played or watched a video on my iPhone without headphones? And we have a new ultra-wide camera with a 120 degree field of view. And now we've added semantic rendering. This allows us to more intelligently detect subjects and relight them with detail so they look even better. Now the ultra-wide lens on the iPhone 11 is kind of cool and that semantic rendering at the end of the picture pipeline sounded even cooler actually, though I don't fully understand it, but I'm excited to see what Apple does with those abilities in terms of machine learning and being able to kind of parse out all the crap that we end up taping or videoing or taking pictures of with our stupid phones. So now you can also take portraits of your favorite pets. Do you guys miss animal portrait mode? Monty, this is your lucky day. Did anybody else notice the mountain biker shooting a video of another biker without a case on their iPhone? Who does that? Like, I get Apple Care Plus is pretty awesome, but come on, just going out, doing all that stuff with a plain iPhone with no protection? That seems irresponsible. And as a side note, if you are looking for a case for your iPhone, do check my channel because I've got a ton of iPhone case accessory reviews. Top 10 list coming probably in the next couple of days. Slow fees. If you don't know what slow fees are, the front facing camera of the new iPhones will allow you to take slow motion video. And so now Apple's trying to be cool and relevant by calling them slow fees. So before I continue on with the last 60% of the reasons, what stood out in your opinion for that keynote? Let me know in the comments section below because I view it with a relatively pessimistic view when it comes to these keynotes nowadays, even though I am a big Apple fan, it's just something different needs to happen, I think. But let me know what you guys think were the most interesting parts. Well, now we're introducing the A13 Bionic, the next generation of our industry leading chip. Why do people clap at something that we all know is coming? I don't understand it. With the iPhone XR's A12 Bionic chip, it still leads the pack in terms of the latest smartphones and chips. This is pretty funny because Team Apple is trying to throw shade on other smartphones by showing a graph with no scale or label axes. Isn't that like the first thing they teach you in grade four math is that you always have to label the axes on your charts? The founder of Tipsworks. Iron Man platform shows up again. It's so violent. The Apple keynote is now PG-13. Now, the only thing that was going through my mind when they're showing this new game that looks incredibly awesome, which I'm assuming it does on an actual device, not on a device being filmed through a projector that's being transmitted through the internet, is that what does $100 worth of in-app purchases get me? Now, honestly, it's pretty evident that Joni Ives has left because Team Apple went all out by designing an iPhone with the same form factor as the one from BU4 last year and the year before that. And the, really the biggest difference was that they cut another hole in the back. And then they end up calling it the Pro Design. That's literally the equivalent of me putting on another Costco shirt with a front pocket and then calling myself fancy. A beautiful silver and a new gold. Ooh, a new gold. Is it going to be pink? It, we added brand new machine learning accelerators in our CPUs. These accelerators are built to run matrix multiplication very fast. That's an operation that's used frequently in ML computation. Now, honestly, I talk about this a lot. Machine learning is pretty cool. Most companies are going to use AI to figure out how to pillage your personal data. Apple is using AI to turn your iPhone into your second wife or husband. And we did this with over eight and a half billion transistors. Yes, more useless numbers describing something that's not going to matter to 99% of the population. 
First, it starts with the transistors, the fundamental building blocks of our chips. So apparently transistors look like purple waffles. We're also including our fast charge 18 watt adapter in the box so you can charge them all faster too. Who called it? I totally did. When the iPad Pros come out, I said that that charger in the iPad Pro box was gonna come out as the Apple. Called it, I was right. Now all these work together with the A13 Bionic chip and its new generation image signal processor. And that enables a whole new level of photography, pro photography. Now the triple camera is pretty cool if you know how to use it. My mother needs a new iPhone. Does she care if there's gonna be three camera lenses on her phone? No, absolutely not. Just how many more lenses do we need before it just kind of gets silly? But the telephoto camera and the ultra wide, you have the ability to zoom in two times and zoom out two times. That's a 4X optical zoom range. Now claiming that the iPhone has four times zoom is borderline lying. It's equivalent to me saying that I had a thousand dollars to spend when 500 of it is a bank overdraft. Look at the eye, the detail in the eye, the, the details in the eyelashes, the incredible skin tones. This is a great photo show, the power of this new camera system. Who else was freaked out by the giant eyeball? Like what's the best way to show how good a camera is? It's by taking a close up photo of one of the weirdest parts on the human body. See incredible image clarity, stunning environment, skin tones are beautiful, shot by natural light. Just see this incredible abstract image, looks stunning. The focus is incredible because of the depth of focus of that camera. Hey Phil, we can't see that. In fact, you can't either because what you're describing are the colors that your projector is displaying during that presentation. Somebody made an oopsies at the skate park. I'm guessing water, but it could be something else. Is that a young Jason Momoa? More people running off the stage. Isn't that the alley where Batman's parents were killed? And if you guys didn't notice, Phil definitely spilt something on his shirt during that video break. We even have redesigned the camera app. There's a new font in it called SF Camera. It is so pro, you're gonna love using it. A pro font, Phil? Come on now. So a great example of this is Filmic. We're delighted to preview the next version of Filmic Pro. Oh, damn. But now you can shoot with multiple cameras at the same time. Oh, damn. That's right, Sean. We can even couple this incredible ultra-wide camera with the front-facing camera. Oh, damn. So I can literally take the audience and slap them right in the middle of a conversation. I I'm going to need a... I'm going... I'm gonna need a moment. That was too good. For a lot of the B-rolls on this channel, I shoot it with at least two cameras. So being able to use capture footage from two lenses at the same time, that's gonna be a game changer for me. That literally would be the only reason why I would go spend more money on a new iPhone if I wasn't a product reviewer for iPhone accessories. What the hell is the U1 chip? We have the H1, W1, T1, and whatever A number bionic chip that we have. What the hell is the U1 chip? Come So apparently the iPhone 11 is the least environmentally friendly Apple device announced today. You can pre-order all of them starting this Friday at a new time, 5 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, so if you can get a few more hours of sleep. Pre-ordering starts at 5 a.m. this coming Friday. PDT time, I think, yeah, PDD time, which is pretty great. But I guess it begs the question, is it better to stay up really late or to get up really early? Because previous years, I had to stay up really late. Actually, I'd take a midday nap in order for me to stay up till one to pre-order the iPhones, but now that I have to wake up like three hours earlier, I don't know what's better or worse. I would love to start this update on Apple Retail. Talking about Apple Retail is literally the biggest buzzkill ever for a keynote. <laughs> So that's all I got. I'm pretty sure 3738 of those things is kind of whatever, but honestly, these Apple keynotes are getting a little boring. The triple camera, from me, for me personally, being able to film stuff on this channel is going to be awesome, I think. I've already pre ordered my Apple Watches, so they come whenever they come. Pretty excited to use. I don't even know what's new in them. Whoa. Oh, yeah, the screen that never goes off. Yeah, I guess that's like <laughs> so very, very little has changed apparently for the Apple Watch. And I just spent $1,600 on them.
If this is the first time watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to subscribe. I've got a ton of other iPhone 11 related content coming in the next week or so, as well as a ton of uh, product reviews. I've got the most limitless 3.0s. That's cool. Again, what was the biggest flub or biggest, most interesting thing that you saw during the Apple keynotes? Let me know in the comments section below. There's literally people talking, laughing over there. There's, there is a boardroom beside here and I couldn't do any sound absorption stuff on this wall because, well, they got pretty pictures. And so the people in there right now literally have an office right beside it and they couldn't go and use their office to have this meeting that they were making a lot of noise. Like they're laughing and clapping and laughing and clapping. It's annoying. And I'm trying to be as obnoxious over here as possible because now they're quiet. See, now this is a good time to record. It's crazy how loud some people will talk on the phone. Like there's a guy sitting in one of the phone call booths and it's like the guy is screaming at the person on the other line, but like the mics are going to do the auto gain. They're going to figure everything out. So you can literally talk as quiet as this and it's still going to come out pretty okay, but it's okay. I'm an alpha male. I got to exert my voice through the microphone to prove to the person on the other side that I'm better than them. I'm bigger than them. I'm smarter than them. Alpha males.